Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm going to be doing a teardown and then showing some of the modifications that I do to the GR1225 Motorola desktop repeater. Uh, this is a really nice repeater because it is, you know, completely in this entire small box with just an antenna, uh, antenna connector on the back and power. Um, I really like it uh, because it's real clean like that, and it comes in four different variants, UHF and VHF with high and low. This happens to be a UHF high power, which means that it has um, 20, it, it, it can put out output power between 25 and 45 watts. The low power ones are 1 to 10 watts. All right, so just looking on the front panel first, I guess, we've got the microphone, microphone port here, because um, this also supports just being a really, really nice base station. So you've got a microphone jack. Here's your power switch and volume. You've got your mode select, so you can have up to 16 different modes programmed into the repeater. And then you've got your monitor button, repeater enable button, and then an optional user button. This top section here is where you can uh, install a extra repeater controller that's more sophisticated than the one built into the transceiver. Um, but since I usually set these up as standalone single repeaters for temporary events, I only use this front panel here as a nice flat place to put notes about how I have it currently configured. Taking two uh, T10 screws off the back, slide it all the way back, and then flip it up. Disconnect the fan. And we're inside the repeater. Looking at it from the rear, um, you can tell that it's a high power one because the R1225 transceiver on the top here has these large golden fins. The fins are about this long. On the low power ones, they're about half as long and usually black. Um, and you'll notice that these pieces of coax are usually better routed. They're zip tied to these holes along the edge here. Um, this is actually pretty important because all of this coax is only RG58, which is not shielded well enough to all be bundled in the bottom like that and so the fact that it's like that is just because I'm currently rebuilding this specific model. Um, as it comes from the factory it the only th the uh, power connection to it is a 120 volt IEC connector that runs through this grommet into the 120 volt to 12 volt power supply in the bottom here. Um, out of that comes three connections one of them is a bullet connector up to the R1225 transceiver. The second is the six pin power connector to the case fan. And the third is this 120 volt Fahrenheit uh, normally open thermal switch. This is shoved into between two of the fins in here with the spring clip. And so when this heat sink reaches 120 degrees Fahrenheit, it tells the power supply that it should turn on the fans and in which case it switches on the fan. Um, it also, the power supply it does have a toggle switch on the back here, which indicate, which allows you to select continuously on versus only thermally controlled. But I dislike this thermal control because the power amplifiers in these 1225s have a t tendency to melt. Um, and so I just unconditionally run the fan continuously and then so all that means is I cut this I cut this thermal switch out of the power supply and then I wire the fan up in parallel with the bullet connector so here's the bullet connector to the 1225 I just wire them in parallel such that the fan is always on when the repeater is on um, the other mod I do is the other side of this cable where I put power poles this is the kind of the amateur radio Aries standard for DC power. I put power poles on this, and then a power pole on the actual power supply. Um, this allows me to not only run this off of 120 volt from the bottom power supply, but also from a DC 12 volt system, which a lot of these sites I actually tend to set up with solar. And so what I'll do is I'll take a, you know, this, this would be the power pole coming from my solar controller. Power poles fit through the combed accessory port right there and then I can run both the 1225 and the case fan off directly off of a 12 volt system 
and leave the 120 volt power supply on the bottom completely unpowered. Looking more closely, on the left here, you can see this is the duplexer. Um, the duplexer is a set of six cavity filters that allows you to take the antenna connection, connect it to the center. The top three notch out your higher frequency, and your bottom three notch out your lower frequency, so that if when you feed in your high frequency side here, which I believe I have currently set up as the receiver, right? So let's talk about the low side, right? So on the R1225, it has two antenna connections. This one on the back is your transmit port, and then on the front side of it is the receive port. So when the repeater is keyed up, out of this port comes anywhere between 25 and 45 watt, depending on how you can have it configured, runs along this piece of coax, to the top port here. This port then has between here and here three cavity filters that notch out the higher frequency which is what the repeater is listening on. Um, ideally the transmitter should only be putting out power on the lower frequency of the two pair of the pair um, but in the real world you're gonna have enough power coming out at the receive frequency to interfere with it. So these three cavities between here and here notch out that higher frequency. Whatever is left, which is typically you lose about one decibel at your pass frequency here, that comes out to the antenna and gets transmitted. On the input side, the received frequency comes in here, comes back into the duplexer, and then these three on the high side of the duplexer, which is on the bottom, because backwards, um, these three cavities notch out all of the power running from here to here from the transmitter, right? And so you've got at least 70 decibels of notching here, removing the received frequency from the transmitter. And you've got at least 70 dB of notches here, notching out the transmitted power to not desense the receiver. This piece of coax then, typically you want to run it here, um, out to the front where it plugs into the 1225. Looking on the side here, um, I always like to sharpie high and low because I, when I'm trying to tune this um, duplexer when it's installed in the case like this, I will inevitably get confused. So I just write that the, the lower frequency is always on the top, higher frequency is lower, always on the bottom. And then this masking, piece of masking tape here, you can see that I've currently got it tuned for 444.650 with a positive offset, which means that the transmitter is on 444.650 and then the receiver is five megahertz above that. Um, that's what, just what I use for testing. Um, and the commercial duplexers tend to not be very happy about that. Four more T15 screws takes off the front face plate. So there's two. There's two. Now when the faceplate comes off, it has two ribbon cables. One of them goes to the front I.O. connector here, and the second one goes to the front display board here. Um, both of those can be removed from this side. And you can remove the faceplate. And we can now see the front of the transceiver here and the front of the, or I guess really the back of the power supply here. All right, so on the other side of the power supply, it's got a little toggle switch, which now only decides if this case fan for the power supply right there is continuous or thermally controlled, since the case fan for the whole system is con always continuous now. Up here on the left, you can see this is the receive port, and both of these ports on the R1225 transceiver are this mini UHF, which is a popular choice with Motorola, but kind of that's the only people that use it, so it's really kind of an inconvenience. Um, 
this ribbon cable right here um, has got one one more torque right there. This face plate comes off and you can remove these. To actually uninstall the transceiver and the power supply, you've got one screw on this side. I believe it's a T20. Um, one screw here for the transceiver, one screw here for the power supply. And then on the other side, the screw would be here and here, except that the duplexer is um, in the way. And so what you have to do is take these four screws out for the duplexer, remove the complete duplexer, then you can stick a screwdriver into that hole, release the other side, and then the R1225 transceiver comes out like that. All right, so this is gonna just a quick teardown of the R1225 transceiver, uh, transceiver in the GR1225 U, uh, UHF repeater. Um, the main thing is that I, I cut out this 120 volt 120 degree Fahrenheit thermal switch because 120 degrees is a little bit hotter than I like to run these things and I mod the actual power cable I mod the power supply so that it gives out um, 12 volts into a power pole and then I I build this wiring harness that takes me from power pole to the Motorola bullet connector and the case fans um, six pin which it only uses the two on the right there um, I make this wiring harness so that I can power the entire system directly off of a 12 volt system and not have to have 120 volt AC since many of my radio sites don't have that um, if you have any questions or comments um, leave them below thanks for watching